In this video, we're going to talk about do support. I want you to look at the first sentence I have, this statement, you dance. And if you want to make it a question, we can't really do subject auxiliary inversion because we don't have any auxiliaries there. So what happens when we make it a question? Well, we end up with, do you dance? And one of the big questions is, where does this do come from? There's no do in our original statement. You do dance. We don't say that. And if we do, it's really for emphasis, like, yes, he does dance for sure. So why do we get this do at the beginning of our sentences in questions? And there's a really simple answer to this. And that when there's no other option for supporting inflectional affixes, we insert do into T in order to move it up to C. And this is frequently referred to as dummy do. As in, this is a nice item in our lexical inventory that doesn't really have a purpose other than just to be put in there when we need something there. And that's kind of the explanation that you'll get in any course, at least at the beginning, and I think it's a good place to start. So let's show you how this works. I want to make the question, do you dance? So in our surface structure, we have you, we have minus past, dance. And if we take the inflectional morphology and we move it down to dance like we can and then we want to make a question we have nothing left in t to move up so what do we do well we need to move something up from t to c so we insert our lovely dummy friend do under t and then it undergoes movement and then we end up with do you dance okay and this is really all there is to it and again, like I said in the previous video, it's not that we're inventing rules for the syntax tree in order to make it work and then tell you what's grammatical or not. We're taking a look at language. Like we have this sentence and we want to figure out how it moves. So one possibility is that maybe two doesn't even start in T. Maybe two is just this thing that magically inserts into C. So maybe it doesn't start in T at all. So let's debunk that hypothesis. Let's show that it absolutely has to be in T. And here, we need to talk about negation. So we have some sentences here, you dance, you not dance isn't okay. When we want to say the negative, we need to say you do not dance. And this do comes back into place. Here's another dummy do. Where did it come from? Why is it there? It looks like we need do support. We can't just insert a negation. So how do we explain this? Well, here's how we explain this. You not dance. That's a good thing to start. So the first thing to notice is that we have this negation phrase. So neg p, neg bar, and neg. Neg is an established syntactic category for negation. And neg appears after t and before vp. At some point I may look into arguments that explain why this happens in a video. Uh, but for now, we'll take it for granted. Okay, so you not dance. And I want to say you do not dance. So what should happen is this tense moves down to dance. But the problem is that T or tense in T cannot make it past negation. Negation is like this shield that prevents anything in T to move down to the VP. And I think it might be even clearer to see this if we had he there, because he has inflection on the verb, right? So he not dances. It should be dance is if we do have this he here, right? But we have nothing that T can move to. We can't get the inflection down. So what do we do? We insert our dummy do. Now we get he do not dance, but that'd be incorrect English. So if we said you do not dance, it's perfect, right? So we say, oh, well, the two do just goes into T and everything's okay. But how do we know where the inflection goes? And we can check that by inserting the pronoun he. Now remember that T is present tense. So what's the present tense of do? Well, the present tense of do is does which means two things. First of all, there is definitely minus past still in T. We know that for sure. 
And the other thing we know is that do is also in t. And we know do is in t because do picks up this inflectional morphology. So this is how we know that do actually does make it into t, and it's not just inserted into c. So it doesn't just appear here, like we could believe, it actually does go into t. And then we can do some questions. So that was you do not dance, and now we have he does not dance. Now we can make this a question. And how do we make this a question? We could say, does he not dance? And what does this mean? Well, this means that now this just moves up to C, and then we get, does he not dance? And we can see this is, again, T to C movement. So that is proof that do does appear in T, and it moves up to C to make a question. So sometimes you have to look at different types of syntactic structures in order to figure out where these weird things go. So this do, we add some question, and I kind of stated the answer to it without giving you motivation, but hopefully now you can see this motivation that, oh wait, if we take a look at negative sentences, and we have these other assumptions about language, then where do we go? And how can we prove that do goes into t and then moves up to c in questions? Because here we have very clear evidence here that does is in a statement and then this do with does moves up to C. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.